This video is all about linear models and rates of change. Let's start with the slope of a line. So we've already reviewed a little bit about slope and how to graph using slope, but slope is essentially the measure of how steep a line is. It's measured rise over run or vertical change over horizontal change. And I've written a few different representations for you here. So first is M. M is what we use to represent slope. So if you see M in an equation, quite often it's talking about slope, especially if you're talking about a linear equation. Delta, remember the delta Greek symbol just means change in, so that just means change in y over change in x. And how do we find the change in y? We subtract the y values. To find the change in x, we subtract the x values. So let's look at a couple of practice, not in finding slope necessarily, we'll do that in just a moment, but in using slope to graph. So if I'm graphing the first one, y equals negative 2 thirds x minus 4. So again, this is y equals mx plus b, which is slope intercept form. Hopefully we remember, we are actually going to review it in just a moment in this video. Uh, so let's review it now as well. The b value tells us where to start. In this case, that's at negative 4 on the y axis. It's a y intercept. And then the m value is the slope, and that gives us change in y over change in x. Now, negative 2 thirds means I can think of it as negative 2 over positive 3 or positive 2 over negative 3. Now, let's take a look at what that does. If I went down 2 to the right 3, that gives me this point, and I can do that as many times as I need. Or I can go up 2, which is positive 2, but to the left 3, and as you can see, this is still on the same line. So that's how I could graph that first line. Sorry, it's not super straight. The second one, y equals 5x. So notice there's no plus or minus anything, which means I'm starting right there in the center. The slope is 5, and remember, we always think about slope as a fraction, so 5 over 1, so that's up 5 over 1 up 5 over 1, or just as we did with 5 over 1, I'm sorry, with negative 2 over 3, I can think of this as negative 5 over negative 1. So I can go down 5 into the left one, and we can see that that's on the same line. Now, I threw those other two in here just for fun so that we could remember what happens when we don't have a slope. So there's zero slope and there's undefined slope. Let's look at y equals 7 y equals 7 is everywhere where y is equal to 7. That's going to look like this. And I want you to think of y equals 7 as y equals 0x plus 7. So this is a 0 slope. So m is equal to 0. And a 0 slope is just going to be a horizontal line. That is different from, obviously, a horizontal slope. x equals 2 would be this line right here. And this is not considered having a slope. It's called undefined slope. Because any x values, we're going to take the change in y could be, say, some number 8. But the change in x is going to be 0. And we know that we can't divide by 0. So that's an undefined fraction and an undefined slope. So often my students are very familiar with uh, slope intercept form, but not with point slope form. So if they are confronted with a question like this, where I give them two points and say, please write the equation of the line, they will use slope intercept form. So of course, the first thing we would do is find slope. So again, hopefully you remember that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which essentially just means subtract the y values and subtract the x values. So I'm going to find the slope as 11 minus 3, so we're going to call this x2, y2, and x1, y1. You don't have to label them. 11 minus 3 over 2 minus negative 2. Now, of course, minus negative really just means plus, so 11 minus 3 is 8. 2 plus 2 is 4. My slope is 2. So what often happens is students will say, okay, well, that's y equals 2x plus b, and then they will plug in a point, say 2, 11. 11 equals 2 times 2 plus b. 2 times 2 is 4. And then they'll subtract 4 from each side. So their equation is y equals 2x 
plus 7. Totally fine to do it that way. However, it's also very useful to know how to use point slope form. And point slope form looks like this, where we say y minus the y value. So I'm going to use that same point. So y minus 11 equals the slope, which is 2, and then x minus the x value. So I get y minus 11 equals 2x minus 4. I add 11 to each side to get y equals 2x plus 7. Notice I get the same equation, but often it's going to be easier to use point slope form. Um, you'll never get points counted off by using point slope instead of slope intercept, but just know that that's a tool in your tool belt. Since we're still talking about slope, Let's talk about slope as an average rate of change. So we talk about slope quite often in the purely mathematical sense of rise over run, change in y over change in x, but really we're talking about the rate of change of something. So if we have something that changes over time quite often, we will look at something called an average rate of change. So here's an example. If I'm looking at the Omaha population, Omaha is where I live, um, the metro population was 835,000 in 2020. So again, I'm just going to think about that as an ordered pair. 2020, 835. And in 2022, the population was 851,000. And now that we want the average rate of change. So how do I do that? Well, again, how did I know to put 2020 and then 835 instead of 835, 2020? Well, because I know that if I'm talking about the rate of change, I'm going to be talking about what is the change per year. That means a year has to be on the bottom or change in X. So that makes sense that this would be the X value is the year. That's always going to be the case when you're dealing with something with time. So again, how would I find the average rate of change? I would just find the slope. 851 minus 835 in thousands, of course, and then 2022 minus 2020 gives me 16,000 over 2, which is 8,000. Now remember, this is an average rate of change, so it's saying the population increased by about 8,000 per year. So that is an average rate of change. Now that means it's feasible that in 2021, the population would be 835,000 plus 8,000 or 843,000. Um, but we don't know that for sure. We just know that that's about where that population would be. We want to talk really quickly about parallel and perpendicular lines as well. And I had planned to create another slide just going over slope intercept form, but I feel like we've already talked about it in the last video and again in this video, so I'm not going to spend a whole slide talking about it again. Oops, that should be a B. So just remember the B is the Y intercept, that is where we can start, and the M is the slope, which we just have been reviewing in this video. So this question asks us to put a lot of things together. Uh, pretty much everything we've reviewed in this video. So point slope form, slope intercept form, and then also parallel and perpendicular lines, which we haven't done yet. So first I'm going to graph the equation y equals x plus 1. So that means I'm starting at positive 1, and my slope is 1 over 1. So that just means up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Okay, or down 1 to the left 1, it really doesn't matter. That's my first graph. Now, it also says, write the equations and graph the lines parallel and perpendicular to the original line through the point 6, 2. So here's the point 6, 2. And I want to find the equation of the line that's parallel. And I'm just going to wing it here, perpendicular. So how am I going to find those? I'm actually going to do that in a different color so we can keep the color scheme going. So through 6, 2, it would look something like this, and we'll fix it if we need to. So let's start with parallel. What we know about parallel lines is that they have the same slope. So if my original slope was 1, then my new slope for the parallel line is also 1. So how am I going to do this? I have a point, and I have a slope. 
So I've got 6, 2 and the slope, so I'm going to use point slope form. y minus y1 is equal to the slope, and then x minus x1, and simplify. y minus 2, x minus 6, add 2 to each side, I get y equals x minus 4. So I got pretty close with my little graph over here. I didn't quite go through negative 4, um, but you get the idea that that is the line that is parallel up one over one, and so on. Now, how am I going to graph the line perpendicular? Well, what we know about perpendicular, whoops, forgot my R. What I know about perpendicular lines is that they have the opposite sign reciprocal slope. So if my original slope was M equals one, my perpendicular slope is m equals, I'm going to take 1 as a fraction, I'm going to flip it over, which is still 1, and then I'm going to change the sign. So now my slope is negative 1. How do I write that equation? Uh, I'm going to switch back to yellow here. y, again, we're still using the point 6, 2, so y minus 2, and then my slope is negative 1, x minus 6. So now I have y minus 2 and negative x plus 6. And then I add 2 to each side, I get negative x plus 8. And again, I didn't quite hit the 8 where I should have, but it's going to look kind of like that. So we get the idea um, that we can use point slope form and parallel and perpendicular slopes to create new equations of lines from existing equations of lines. Coming up next, we are going to review functions and their graphs.